Hey now. So welcome to Fitz's Electric Bar. Fitz here and another installment of if you like this, you might like that. And very briefly, it's just uh, connecting up two artists and or albums that I feel are similar enough in vibe that um, if you like one, you might be interested in the other. And what I encourage you to do is if uh, you want to explore, then certainly stream it, see what you think about it, and then consider buying it. This is my role as music evangelist. I want to save ya. Okay, enough shtick. Um, I don't know between these two artists uh, who might be the more obscure one. Often I like to pick something that people might know and then maybe connect it with something that you may or may not know. But I'm gonna start off with uh, Whiskey Town. Whiskey Town was the band that Ryan Adams was in before going solo. This one's called Pneumonia. <clears throat> the one I actually like the best is this particular one. It's This one is a little bit less slick, Stranger's Almanac, um, and a little more rock and roll. Um, it's got a great, it's got definitely country tin. So this is kind of in the Uncle Tupelo honey, uh, Uncle Tupelo uh, type of uh, space, I guess. Excuse me while I break my own heart tonight, which is great. Uh, Turn around, really nice tune and uh, losering. Uh, I really enjoy this record. Great driving record. It's got a nice groove to it. So again, Ryan Adams' earlier band, Whiskey Town, I recommend. So if you know that, I suggest that you'll really enjoy this. And I don't hear a lot about Magnolia Electric Company. This is the album Josephine, which I really like. I, I got the uh, re-release of Sojourner, which is uh, great. What Comes After the Blues and a few other songs that you might know from. Sometimes, you know, we know songs from a playlist that or the algorithms that suggest stuff and you don't even know you realize it. But this is the album for me, Josephine, um, Jason Molina and um, Magnolia Electric Company. Again, a Whiskey Town fan would probably like this. I think Uncle Tupelo fan um, would also like this. Uh, maybe Sun Volt. Uh, it's kind of that rock and roll alt country kind of with a little more rock and roll to it. That is uh, what makes this quite unique. And this one here, if you're going to pick a tune or two, um, certainly Sad Eyes. It's got some really nice organ work in it. Really stripped kind of bare, but it's got some power to it as well, which I really like. And I can't read the handwriting on the back of the, uh, of the record, but... Uh, Josephine, the title track is really nice as well. So Magnolia Electric Company and Whiskey Town, those are two that go together really well. Next up, I'm gonna look at uh, what I would call sort of early morning records, um, things that you might really enjoy hearing first thing in the morning. Um, I'm a big Bill Evans fan, as most of you know, if you've been watching this. And this was kind of a surprise for me because it's a little bit later career Bill Evans. Um, as I understand it, you must believe in spring with Eddie Gomez and Elliot Zygmunt. Um, Eddie Gomez, I know. This is a 45 RPM. Um, I, I really love uh, his very ly lyrical, melodic stuff. Um, it's almost like the more sparse the arrangements, um, the better I like uh, Bill Evans' material. Um, when there's a lot going on, I just feel it sounds a bit cocktailish, cocktail music-ish which is you know, ridiculous for me to say, but I suppose just doesn't have the same emotional resonance, resonance that I feel when things are really stripped bare. And that's why I really love the uh, Sunday at the Village Vanguard and Waltz for Debbie live stuff at the Village Vanguard. Um, and I've also liked some of the stuff off of Treasures. I really enjoy the kind of the ballads off of um, Everybody Digs Bill Evans and Conversations with Myself. But this is one that I don't know why I just, thought was kind of maybe going to be one of his later not so good ones and I love it. Uh, this is really great. Um, everybody, you must believe in spring. It's got a uh, version of uh, theme from MASH which again sounds kind of cheesy but it's uh, it's really good. B minor waltz for Elaine. You must believe in spring. Gary's theme. We will meet again um, some time ago. Really nice record. Bill Evans. So that may or may not be the, you know, best known among this group here. But if you're a Bill Evans fan, I think you might want to consider, I've shown this before, but um, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Anwar Brahim. I think he is a Turkish 
um, performer and oud player. Um, but this is really nice. It 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 sounds like a like a French, you know, new wave film. It's a lot of space, uh, beautiful piano work, uh, very melodic, very kind of lyrical, meaning, I guess, melodic. It's not, there's no, I don't think there are any vocals on here at all. It's the oud, the piano, and the accordion. Um, but this is a really nice, you know, morning music, and I really enjoy it. And if you're a Bill Evans fan, I think that might be something you would enjoy. Another one I had on CD, and uh, pardon me while I open it up, but I just got it on vinyl. I wanted to uh, have a vinyl copy, and that's uh, Rachel's. And this was um, a, um, I guess, commission for a play that I think ran in Chicago. Um, and it's, it's uh, gorgeous. It's almost like chamber music, I guess. Very simple. Piano, viola, and cello. Um, but, um, yeah, it just creates a beautiful kind of flow. And, uh, again, it's, um, I like records that challenge me and that take you on a ride and therefore has, you know, different aspects to it as it kind of evolves through the record. But I also really like a record that, um, maintains a certain mood or tone and kind of keeps you locked into that. And I feel that this is one of those. This is music for Egon Chile. And I had the good fortune of uh, going to a museum in um, Vienna in Austria and seeing a pretty substantial collection of Egon Schiele's work. And it was uh, really um, very powerful, amazing artist. Shocking, some of his stuff, like really the nudes and everything. They're not just nudes, they're just like splayed legs and like, you know, genitalia, very prominent and uh, very cool. But anyways, I digress. Rachel's and music for Egon Schiele. And finally, um, this guy's released a lot of stuff. He passed away not long ago, but um, I've heard this was a really good record and I bought it and I really like it. Um, Susumu Yokota. And he's does a lot of like um, sampling and weaves different things together. He's um, really, really good. Like he, uh, there's, there, he samples some classical music and puts it together. This is quite a journey. It does create a mood, which is really cool, but it's, um, it, uh, yeah, I'm afraid this is one I just can't describe, but I think you can probably stream it and recommend it. It's uh, really cool. So this one's called Symbol Susumu Yokota. And that's it for the third part. And then we'll get to the fourth part. Or no, is that the second part? I don't know. Where am I? So the next one is um, country. So a lot of people are Graham Parsons fans, as am I. So we've got Grievous Angel and we've got GP. And there are two sort of well-known records of uh, Graham Parsons. And um, Emmy Lou Harris singing backup vocals, I believe, on both records. Uh, awesome. Um, an artist that I have brought out a few times, but... Um, as a music evangelist, one of my jobs is to bring this forward. This guy, I think, is great. Ian No, um, Between the Country, and uh, highly recommend this record. Um, the whole thing is, is just great. Great singer-songwriter, country-tinged, but not new country. Um, he was, a, uh, I think, an acolyte of John Prine. John Prine took a great interest in him, and Ian No, Between the Country, highly recommend that record. And finally, for the fourth part, um, I'm getting excited because I'm going to see Peter Gabriel. He's uh, on tour and coming to Vancouver in the first week of October and uh, I've got tickets for that. So I'm looking forward to that. I've never seen Peter Gabriel, never saw Genesis. I'm more of a Peter Gabriel fan than a Genesis fan. But um, this off of the first record, right? Just Peter Gabriel. His naming conventions for his albums are a little confusing. But this has got the great Salisbury Hill Um the Excuse Me, which is wonderful. Moribund, the uh, Bergenmeister. Um, Here Comes the Flood. Wonderful record. So Peter Gabriel. I always think of Peter Gabriel when I listen to Elbow. Uh, this is the greatest hits. They've got some really nice records out. I've got a few of those, but this is the greatest hits. Highly recommend um, listening to Elbow. There's something, there's, they're beautifully orchestrated. Uh, wonderfully arranged, and for some reason, vocally, they kind of remind me of Peter Gabriel. Um, and some songs that I would recommend maybe would be uh, My Sad Captain's New York Morning. Um, 
Yeah, they're, they're all really good, but you could just run through the best of Elbow and really enjoy it. Elbow, Peter Gabriel. That's it. Carpe diem, MFs.